Welcome. Today, I'm going to teach you the pro finger picking trick I wish I knew when I started finger picking. See, I started because I wanted to spice up my acoustic guitar playing. Playing 10 songs of strumming in a row started to sound kind of, you know, the same over and over again. And I thought, man, I just, I've heard people play finger style and I think adding a little of that in is going to make everything sound just a little bit better and more interesting. The problem was, is I was stuck learning a brand new way to pick with my right hand finger pick each song. And where strumming, you know, I could just grab it and strum because I, I had learned how to do that. But once I learned what I'm going to teach you in this video, I was able to apply a pattern to what I was doing with my right hand to get started on almost any song. This is that powerful. But first, why would you listen to me? Well, my name is Jake and I've been teaching guitar for 17 years out of the back of guitar stores, in high schools, and at the college level. Now, most recently, I run the online community Guitar Gym Pro. So what's the plan for today? We're gonna to do this in four steps. So first, I'm gonna break a pattern down on a C chord because it's a nice chord to start on for finger picking. And then I'll give you a few technique tips, right? So like, how are we physically finger picking to make it sound the best we can? Then I'm gonna apply that same pattern to a G chord and a D chord that's gonna cover our basics of chords. We've got that five string chord starting on A, we've got the six string chord for uh, starting on the low E, and then we've got the four string chord for the D chord. And then lastly, I'm gonna give you some ways to start adding variations to this pattern so it's not just the same thing every single time. So this pattern is called the pinch and it just takes four beats. You can see I've got the eighth notes there. I'm just pulling up the full tab. We got six strings there. All right, so you see that this is just on a C chord, right? I'm just holding the C chord the whole time and I'm letting each note ring. I'm putting my thumb on the fifth string and I'm also gonna have it cover the fourth string when we get there. I'm gonna use my index finger on the third string and my middle finger on the second string. So you see on beat one, we pluck our fifth string and our second string at the same time. That's thumb and middle finger. On the and after one, we don't do anything. One, and. Then on two, beat two, we play this fourth string and I'm moving my thumb to play that, followed by our index finger. So those first four notes are pitch, weight, thumb on four, index on three. Then on beat three, we're gonna play thumb on five, middle on two, thumb on four, index on three. And so all together, that's Let's try it a little slower even. One and two and three and four and. And then we just play that slowly and slowly until we can speed it up. Weight, thumb on four, index on three, thumb on five, middle on two, thumb on three, index on three. Sorry, that last was thumb on four, index on three. I said three for thumb, but thumb is on strings five and strings four. So let's talk about a few technique tips. We don't wanna bend any of our knuckles. We wanna keep them round as we, so not like that where we're bending that knuckle, but we're keeping it bent. So. We don't want to bend it back, like hyperextend it. We want to keep it bent forward. So we don't want to bend backwards. When I say don't bend the knuckles, don't let them move. We kind of make a claw and we leave it a claw. We're going to pluck along the string. So a lot of people when they start, they're trying to pluck against the string, like a bass player might, right? Like where I'm playing uh, uh, attacking at myself. But what I really want to do is I want, want to run along the string. So I'm going at about, let's say, if if straight up and down, kind of parallel with my fingernail, parallel to the string, I'm probably at like a, if this is zero, I'm probably at like a 75 degree angle coming along the string, like a little bit towards the bridge, not directly up and down. And we're gonna do our thumb in a circle. So from this joint back here where it's connecting to the hand, I'm kind of plucking down and coming around, plucking down, coming around, plucking down, coming around. It's like a little circle for the thumb every time. So before we get into the pinch on G, one more thought. The flesh of your finger is actually what produces the tone. 
Classical players will have nails. They're using nylon strings, and so it doesn't beat up their nails the way steel strings do. Some people have really solid nails and they can handle it. I definitely don't, so I don't have longer nails. It's the flesh that gets the tone. And then the nail, and for classical guitar players, is just to give it extra volume, like a pick. It's not where the tone is coming from. And usually if we're recording in a modern situation or like I've got a pickup and I'm plugged in, I don't need to get that extra volume from my nail. I can get the volume from an amplifier or from plugging into the PA system. So the nail is really just for volume. The, the pad of your <coughs> finger is really where you get, or the tip of your finger is really where you get that tone from. All right, so let's take a look at a pinch on a G chord. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this whole uh, six string situation up. So I hope you see that things are pretty much the same. The only thing that's changed is the chord we're holding, right? I'm holding a G chord and you can hold any G chord. I'm, I happen to be doing this three finger G is what I'm doing. So pinky on third fret of the first string, ring finger on third fret of the sixth and then middle finger on second fret of the fifth string. But I don't need to hold down that second fret of the fifth string or even the third fret of the first string because I'm not plucking any of those strings in this pattern. Though I can because, you know, it's a good habit to play the full chord. Anyway, so we're doing the same thing only instead of our thumb plucking string five and four, we're just doing six and four. It's kind of jumping over string five. So we're plucking thumb and middle finger, string six and two, thumb on four, index on three, thumb on six, middle on two, thumb on four, index on three. And remember, we pinch first, one, wait, thumb, index, thumb, middle, thumb, index. And so we're just alternating where our thumb is on every thumb. Pinch, thumb, one, thumb, two, thumb, one. So that's the pinch on our G chord. So let's take a look at the pinch on the D chord. Just pulling up the whole tab here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna play our D chord. Now D is a four string chord. So we're gonna take everything we did for the C and we're gonna move it one string towards the ground. So thumb on four and it'll also cover string three. Index finger on second string and middle finger on first string. So we're gonna pinch thumb and middle, which is string four and string one. Then we're gonna play thumb on three, index on two, thumb on four, middle on one, thumb on three, index on two. So again, that's pinch, thumb on three, index on two, thumb on four, middle on first string, thumb on third string, index on second. And so those numbers I'm calling out aren't the tab that's on the screen. The numbers I'm calling out are the strings we're plucking. And remember, we number strings one, two, three, four, five, six. Thinnest is one, thickest is six. Pinch, thumb one, thumb two, thumb one. All right, that's it on a D chord. So let's talk about alternative number one. This is what we call a roll. So you can already see it's a little bit different as I'm pulling up this tab. So I'm doing this one on a C chord as well. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, as soon as I do this pinch, I'm gonna roll back into my first finger. So it's pinch, index, thumb, but on the fourth string, and then middle finger. And then beats three and four are the same as they were. Thumb, two, thumb, one. Versus, right, so this is that alternative. And this is the way that we did it initially. So they're very similar, but they do sound different. And so that they can be mixed together really well to create a longer pattern. So alternative number two is going to be what we call outside in. And so what we're going to do is the beginning is the same. Well, the beginning is a little different. So we're going to pinch, we're going to play thumb on the fourth string. And then we're gonna play our middle finger instead of it was our index finger. And then we do the same thing for beats three and four. Pinch, thumb on four, middle on two, thumb, index, thumb, middle. And our original 
and this one. I hope you can see how these are starting to fit together. I hope you see how you can start fitting these together to make longer patterns or change things up just a little bit from that initial pattern. Now, if this was helpful for you, I have more free lessons just like this one, along with a free community of other guitar players just like you. It's the best community online for guitar players and it is free forever. You can join us at school.com slash guitar. That's school with a K dot com slash guitar. S-K-O-O-L dot com slash guitar. I can't wait to see you there.